need, and our daily need, because as, as much as we desire to be Christ-like, as much as we bathe ourselves in Scripture and prayer, uh, we are an imperfect people. And um, boy, in life, I don't know about you, but I flunk a lot. <laughs> I mean, I, uh, you know, I might get the passing grade, the, the D minus, but are we really excited about the D minus? You know, we might pass, but it still probably is not our best effort. And even on our best days, I think maybe I'm getting a B minus. Does that make sense? On my best days, Melissa, what do you think? B minus? Um, so when we're looking at these kind of things. Um, we've talked about the blessings and the anointing of God and uh, looking at some of our, our experiences and expectations that we have is I sincerely hope everyone had a, a Thanksgiving that was one that could be enjoyed. And even if there was a struggle or there was a sadness that was amongst our Thanksgiving that we could still find ways to see the Lord's joy and presence in a day we are gathered together and we're so of love. As I mentioned at the beginning of the service, is that when we're looking at our Christian journey, our discipleship, right, our liturgical calendar, which is the fancy word for the church calendar, is this is supposed to be how we close our, close out our year that we live. This will be our last gathering together before our liturgical 2019 would begin. What does that make us look like? Is this the last message before we begin our Advent series, before we wait for the arrival of Christ? Right, the next time we gather together, we're, the sanctuary is going to look a little bit different as we uh, we have the hanging of the greens. So quick announcement plug for that. That's coming up on Saturday at the 2nd at 10 o'clock. So please come if you're able. It'll be a fun time for us gathering together as families. And there'll be activities for the kids. And it'll just be a good time. And you know, the more of us that show up, the lot easier it is, right? And uh, I don't need to be standing on top of any ladders. So if anybody else can, uh, that's a little bit better on the weight limit for a ladder, can be here, that would be fantastic. So everything will look a little bit different. We'll begin celebrating in a different way. But I would ask us to think about what does that mean for the journey we're about to take? How does that make us look as we go forward through celebrating Advent season, right? The weeks leading up to as we celebrate Christmas, the arrival of Christ into our world, right? We would culminate the season of blessing and the new breath that we would take of our new year would be celebrating the arrival of Christ into our world. You know, I hope that we don't think about such a monumentous thing in the history of all creation began God flipping a coin going, this is the year. I guess we're going to do this thing, Jesus. Let's go ahead and have you, uh, have you arrive this time. You know, there was a need for Christ's arrival. Because as humankind, we were destroying ourselves. We were getting further and further in sinful death. And it became a break. It wasn't a random thing that Jesus came into our world. It was born as we are. To take on the, the flesh that we know as humankind. But it was because enough was enough. And we needed a Savior. We needed a blessing that was not temporary. We needed someone to understand what rejection feels like. I definitely don't want to be one of those leaders, those pastors that that never <laughs> read scripture. So I want to let you know, I am going to read some scripture here in a moment. But I wanted to take you on a little bit of a, a, a illustration before we do that, okay? So I promise I'm going to get there. I promise we're going to tie it in. But I like to celebrate the things that might be old hat to, to you who have been here for a lot longer than Team Osborne, but there are several things that we look to experience, and I'd like to share those with you because then we can talk about them and I don't just look at you like, uh, I have no idea what you're talking about. Went to Sawyer International Airport, right? So we pulled into this big metropolis airport, and we were expecting to see these big jets coming down, and people were waving us to and from, and this big thing. So we pulled in here, and it wasn't at all what we were thinking. We heard international, we thought, oh boy, there's going to be all these restaurants everywhere, right? There's going to be escalator takes us everywhere, this big thing. And so we could see the very end of the airport, which I thought was a little odd, but I thought, well, maybe they're expanding, or maybe it's just beyond something. It's a, a, a back in the woods somewhere, is the rest of it. But we got the tour, and about six minutes later, we were done uh, of Sawyer Airport. But we picked up a family member of ours, and it was interesting because as soon as I walked in the door, they basically came off the plane and could see me. <laughs> it was intimate, you know, so I thought, okay. And
And so I immediately spotted on my peripheral vision, I did not have to leave the room to see the baggage claim over here, right? Because usually that's a journey where you have to ask some folks, right? Like take the hallway and the escalator down to the thing. I could see it, right? I felt like I could touch everything that needed to happen, you know, between planes and Sawyer. So we were there. And so I decided to wait right about here so I could get a good view of, of my sister-in-law when she was coming out. She could see me and know she made it to the right place and I could show her her baggage was over here and things like that. But it's so much different than what I ever experienced before. And it made me think about today the disciple of messages and things we carry, right? And I don't know if you've ever flown anywhere outside of Sawyer before, but sometimes it can be a little more chaotic, right? So there was about seven people that came off the plane and each of them knew what bag there was. Right? It was easy to get to. There it is. I'm on. It was the greatest thing ever. But I've experienced this a little bit different than before. Is that you're kind of hoping your luggage made it. Because there's more than enough, a handful of you there. And there's a lot of bags going everywhere. They're going to and from. So you're, you're sort of panicking that it's going to be here. But then you have to go like far away in like the cellar of the airport. And you have to wait at this big terminal. And you're just kind of like, is it here? 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 Nope. 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 Here's the here's the here. And you, just, you do this several times. Hopefully you're at the right baggage claim, right? So it's, it's one of those things that gets to us. So the whole point of bringing this back to the things we carry is we hope that our bag arrives where we arrive, right? Because there's stuff in there that's that's precious to us, that we plan, that we're familiar with. And so if we don't have our baggage marked, do you suppose that more than one person might have a black bag? Right? So we have to somehow mark it because they can grab my stuff. And I can grab their stuff. That doesn't happen in Sawyer because it's pretty clear whose stuff is whose, right? But we're taking these things, this, this baggage area, and I wonder what that looks like if Jesus were to arrive in this place and look at the baggage of your carrier or you're looking to claim. Follow me through here in a moment before we really start the message and that we have this here is we all have experienced rejection, failure, and sometimes we can admit our own our own uh, influence into that, right? I didn't pass the test because I didn't study, right? I didn't do really well because I didn't work out the way I was supposed to. I got cut from the team because I just I wasn't good enough, you know. I didn't practice my my free throws over the summer. But sometimes there are other things, you know, when when companies are are downsizing. We're good at what we do. And they somehow tell us that they don't need us. Or that sometimes when we thought we were going to be with someone for our whole lives, for whatever reason they tell us, they just don't love us anymore. Or maybe a, a parent doesn't treat us the way that we think that they should. Maybe they even tell us so. Yeah. You're an accident. I don't want you. That's not really the spirit of Thanksgiving. But I want us to remember that we all have experienced on a minor level, but I have a feeling that the more we share with one another, we very much have experienced on a very deep, intimate level some moments of rejection in our life. And sometimes that baggage gets really, really heavy. And we don't know any other way to walk away from it. So when that baggage card comes around, and it's marked loser. It's marked not good enough. That's my bag. Because it's got my name on it. You know Matt, the, the one that's not good enough. That's my bag. Read scripture from Psalm 103, uh, verses 8 through 12. It says, The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding, in love, verse 9, he will not always accuse, nor will he harbor anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great and vast is God's love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removed our transgressions from us. And so we're looking at, at these things and understanding that when God sees all the stuff, when God sees all the ingredients that went into this, to this man, this or me, but as, as human beings, when God sees all the stuff, God just sees 
some things that need redeeming, some things that need saving. Doesn't tally them up and like, wow, you're really, you're really over the average here of what we're accepting today, man. You're just going to have to go aside. We're, we're serving a different quota today. God never says, that's your baggage. The one with loser on it, you know, one way with it. Ugly guy with a scar on his face, that's you over there. That's you that was never going to be good enough. It says here that all our things, our miscomings, our, our rejections, our failures, the things that don't make us feel good inside, the things that can sometimes affect the way that we go about our lives and how we love and how we treat people. Jesus wants more for us than that. And I keep looking over here because we made the illustration of the baggage is over here. It says that God is compassionate and gracious, gracious and ready to take those things for us. I wanted to flip briefly for a second. This one isn't highlighted on your screen, but it comes from Paul's letter, uh, the Philippians ch chapter 2. And it says uh, here, but God, or I'm sorry, Christ, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, verse 7, but made nothing of himself. By taking the very nature of a servant and being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as man or human being, he humbled himself and was obedient even to death. Therefore God exalted him and gave him the highest place, the name above all names, the name of Jesus that every knee should bow in heaven and earth, and every tongue confess that Christ is Lord. And we'll do that because it will glorify God. Now we sang these words of praise, right? We sang these words of blessing. We sang these anointing words. And we know that God in, in, in full majesty on earth in Christ. And we sing this, this power and this, this mighty acts of, of Christ in our life. And does that make us think for just a second? Now remember, we're walking through the calendar, so we're preparing for Christ's arrival in our world. We're preparing to come anew. What does that do for us when we see all these words, right, that are, are just, but even then they barely scratch the surface of how we describe the honor and glory that is to be heaped upon Christ? So if we understand that Christ is the King of all, above all kings, the King of kings, that we understand that He is the Savior of this world, why would He ever then? Because we don't give Him those, those moments of glory, those, those names, those descriptors. We don't give Him that just because He became flesh for us. Those names were bound to Him in heaven. Why would you already have these, these descriptors of your, of your might your power, why would you then dwell amongst us? Why would someone who is the king of kings who anointing of this world, why would you ever stoop literally so low? We remind ourselves, right? We have to come off the throne to come down here to be an infant, right? To not be welcomed, to be hunted down in these moments, and to be rejected all throughout your life. Why would you do that? It sounds silly. Does it sound silly to you? Would you do that? Walk headlong into something that's going to kill you? For what? And nobody even appreciates it? But Jesus said, but Matt, even though you're not worthy of me, I love you too much to let you stay here and carry that baggage around your life. Have you heard or felt the presence of Christ in your life? Or heard the voice to say, you are much more than that. You are so much more than what you give yourself credit for. You know, the theme of Camp Michigami this year was you are worthy. It takes words right from the scripture. We are worthy. Can we understand as we look and, and we give glory to the cross and we look in the shadows, you can't have the cross without the cradle. Do you understand what I'm saying, friends? That you can't have the work and the redeeming work of the cross. You can't have the Savior that overcame death and paid the penalty for sin if first we don't celebrate the cradle. Right? Jesus has to arrive and to grow and to minister before Jesus takes the cross. So in honoring that celebration that we can't have the cross without the cradle, let us focus for a moment on the manger, on the cradle, on the arrival into a place that didn't welcome Jesus. And a place that some were even so fearful of what Jesus could do, the mission of God would hunt him.
trying to kill him. Can we understand that Jesus' arrival to save us, we didn't even welcome and embrace. And again, I ask you, why would Jesus do this? Jesus was willing to feel rejected for us. Have you ever felt alone in those moments in your life when you feel rejected or unloved or unworthy of things? And we've used the language and maybe thought to ourselves, nobody understands what's going on. And sometimes our friends who have gone through a similar scenario or our family, right, like where we kind of know the language, but still can't we say nobody knows exactly what I'm going through because they didn't live our life, they didn't have our exact experiences, they didn't have the inner dialogue that's going on with us. Nobody can fully understand this side of heaven. But you know, Jesus experienced rejection for things that he didn't do either. For things that we did. You know, sometimes rejection, the baggage that we claim, makes us feel alone or isolated. And I think it must have been really nice when church attendance was, was up for Jesus in his ministry, right? And everyone was flocking to him and coming here, and they were, they were giving things, they were celebrating his name. Remember they came in the, in the final week of Christ's life, and he arrived into Jerusalem, and they were singing songs of Hosanna, and this there, having a little parade for him and everything. Hey! By the time the week was over, he would be alone, and he would kill. Within a week, Ever feel like that? That things are going just great and then ugh, we get the call and a sock to the gut that just brings us to our knees. What happened? What happened within days ago we were celebrating? What happened a few days ago we were gathered around friends and family and we had the turkey and the stuffing and all the things? What happened on the 1st of December that took us from there to here?
Jesus saw him. And he still loves you enough to take your place and lives for you still. I talked about this baggage claim in this moment, says not good enough, it says loser, it says all those things that remind me of my failures. What do you think would happen if I got off the plane at Sawyer and I walked over there to grab my bag that I knew was marked mine, right? It wasn't the new bag, it was the pretty used bag. It wasn't really appealing to anybody. It was marked not good enough. So I found over there because that's my normal. That's, that's my bag. It's got my stuff in it. My whole life, it's got my brokenness, my heart, my heartbreak, my hurt. It's got sadness and all those things in there that, that are mine. They're familiar, right? Because they're my memories. And amongst all that hurt, I can still see that's my life. This is my stuff. And I wonder if I reached out to grab my stuff that I was so familiar with and accepted as being what I deserved. What if Jesus reached down and grabbed it? And of course you look up, right? Like, who's grabbing my bag? <laughs> but what if Jesus had his hand in my bag and says, well, don't worry about it. Brother, I got this. I'll take it. I'll carry it for you. I have something else for you. It's a brand new bag. It's full of good things. It's full of joy. It's full of love and blessing. You can't buy this bag. But look, I even put your name on it. It says, to man, love Jesus. Now I have a choice. I can get that bag. But I can't find it in any store. It can't be bought. The one that was made just for me. The good things that Jesus has for me. Or, Jesus can say, Brother, I got this. Uh -uh. Jesus, I got this. This is, this is my stuff. Hands off. Thanks anyway, pal. That sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? But my dear friends, how many times have you and I slapped the hand of one who came to save us. One who came to take our pain away and say, I have better things for you than what you've given yourself. Have you ever slapped the hand that came to save us? Today, in our season of Advent, we prepare to celebrate the arrival of Christ. Would we be mindful of our quick reactions and our way of life to not slap the hand of the Savior who arrived into this world, stripped of all glory and majesty, to just know what it was like to take our place. To come not surrounded in glory, but to come rejected for us. Can we make sure we're not a people who slaps the hand of the Savior away and says, Ah, I don't need you. I don't want you. I've got this. My dear friends, as much as I love you, none of us got this. None of us are capable of carrying this weight in the world. But Jesus overcame it as far as from the east to the west. Would you join me as we prepare to start our liturgical calendar going forward from the time we close today? How are we going to celebrate the arrival of Christ's child in our world with a purpose, not by accident, but to say you are enough and to say I don't want you to carry that baggage, that junk around anymore. I have something new for you. I have something that gives life. And if you take what's in that bag, I'm not saying you're still not going to have to drag it. I'm not saying it's not still going to be heavy. And I'm not still going to say there's going to be hurt in there. But it's going to be from me. And when you see written in blood to Matt from Jesus on there, I will never leave you without that. And you will never have to come back to this plate of hurt and sorrow and emptiness again. Because this was made for you. And no one's ever going to take that away from you. When we go from this place that what we dread is the good things of Christ around us. And to know that Jesus will put opportunities and people in our place so that we don't walk alone. And wouldn't it be great, not for our glory, but for God's, if someone said, hey, Matt, nice bag. <laughs> huh? What if 
times somebody saw Jesus so alive in us and saw the things that we do that weren't warranted and sometimes when they slap our hands, but we simply love children of God. And somebody says, I want that in my life. Or I see that Jesus in there like, where'd you get the Jesus bag? They want to know how our lives are changed. How we're not carrying the junk of this world anymore. My dear friends, I want for you that others would see the bag you're carrying and say, I want some of that Jesus. And then we can say, well, great, because this time of year we're celebrating the arrival of Christ. He'll give you all you 